Welcome aboard. My name is Walter, and I'll be your captain this evening. Um, we're going to talk about a special trade today, and it uses 74 indicators. Okay, not really. We're going <laughs> to... <laughs> We're going to do some naked trading today, and if you've read the book, Naked Forex, then you will have no idea about the system we're going to talk about today, because it's not in the book, Naked Forex. My name is Walter. I'm a psychologist, full-time trader. I like to trade without indicators, and I think you should too. I think you'll. it's addicting once you just eliminate all the crap from your chart. And we're going to help you towards that end today when we talk about the Acapulco trade. So that's what today's all about. It's the Acapulco trade, okay? And, you know, I'm, I'm easily contactable. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, you can email me, wpdfxjake.com. Always do that, okay? Uh, and if I don't get back to you, email me again and just say, hey, hey, come on, man, answer my question. <laughs> I don't have any problem with that. So what is the Acapulco trade? Well, the Acapulco trade is actually a uh, breakout. It's a special type of a breakout trade. And the way that it works is um, you've probably heard the concept of a confirmed breakout. Well, that's what an Acapulco trade is. It's just a really quick confirmed breakdown, breakout. So does anybody have any charts that you would like us to look at? I don't want you to think that, you know, I'm going to cherry pick examples or whatever. So typically, and at the end of the, um, after we talk about the Acapulco ad infinitum, um, and it's completely exhausted and nobody wants to hear about Acapulco's anymore, we can take a look at any chart that you want to see. Okay, so I'm happy to do that as well. Yeah, the old yen. The old Aussie. <laughs> Let's see if we can find an example of what an Acapulco looks like. Unless you guys have one that you want me to use. Ah, perfecto. Here's one. This is actually a brilliant example. Let's use this one. There's one issue with this one, though. So um, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. It's pretty darn good. Okay. So this red arrow... Uh, on the chart here has um, flagged a setup on the chart, which is what I would call an Acapulco. Okay. And I'm going to talk about all the rules of the Acapulco and how you can trade it. Okay. So let's, let's get into that. First of all, what I want to do is draw your attention to the mark, what the market did here, what the market did here, what the market did here, here and here before we look at what happened over here where this blue arrow is. I'm going to make this arrow blue so it's different to the candles. So it's a nice big fat blue arrow. Yeah, okay. So on my charts, typically what I'll do is blue means um, entry price, green means target, and red means stop loss. That's how I color code my prices on there. Now, what I would say about this chart is that there's a pretty solid zone around this area right here. And I know I had it a little bit lower, and that's that's fine. But I think, you know, I think you could get away with saying like something like this, okay? So the market came down, and it didn't quite get there. But it certainly got there, there, and didn't. It almost got there, there, and there. It depends on where you draw it, but we're definitely within the zone. The way that I look at support and resistance levels, it's not an exact price at all. What what I see when I see um, support and resistance levels is I see what we like to call affectionately called beer bellies. So a beer belly is something that's soft and squishy. You can push into it. It's not like a wall where as soon as you hit the wall, you're going to bounce off of it. A beer belly, you might push into it a little bit before you kind of get bounced off of it. And that's what these squishy zones are. So you can see this got really close to it and it bounced twice. Here we kind of touched it exactly. Here we got close again and we bounced off of it. And here we got close again and we bounced off of it. Okay. So a zone is a beer belly. So support and resistance zone equals a beer belly, okay? That's really what this is all about. 
So this beer belly here has come into play once again with <clears throat> is Alcapu can Alcapuco be used in volatile currency pairs? Yeah, of course. Of course. They can be used on any market. It's a confirmed breakout, basically, but it's got specific rules. So yeah, it can be used in any. So in this case right here, I know I'm looking at the New Zealand four hour, and maybe that's why you think it should be on like a only on pairs that aren't very volatile, but that's not the case at all. Um, it, it's completely fine. Now, here's what I would say about this one, and it it almost doesn't really fit the first part of the rule. So it's not in in that in that. In that way, it's not a great example of an Acapulco, but we're going to use it anyway because the candles it's, the candles are great. But the first rule, so I'm going to put all the rules up here so everyone's really clear, and we will write them in, what color should we write them in? We will write the rules in turquoise. <laughs> okay, so rule number one is it's trending in one direction. And that's kind of where this one falls apart, because I would argue that the market is not trending in one direction when we get this this breakdown here. Okay, so I would say that that, that already this because it did it was going down here, but then it consolidated before making the Acapulco move. So I would say that this this rule does not apply to the current setup. And that's, and that's probably the only rule that wouldn't apply here. Okay, is everyone clear on that? So really what you want to see is you want to see a market that's kind of going like this, where it's going down, 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 or one that's going up, 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 and away. Um, you don't really want to trade these as reversal setups or as, you know, breakouts from a consolidation, which is basically what happens here. Um, now, on a higher time frame, you might say that it, it didn't really consolidate that much. But I mean, there's a lot of candles here in this. In fact, you could draw a big, huge box around all this consolidation. And I don't think that that would necessarily be a bad idea. Okay, so we'll make this giant gray box of consolidation. I think that would that a lot of people might, you know, accept that. And depending on where you put the, the, the top and the bottom, I don't know, you know, it's going to vary a little bit, but essentially it's going to look something like that. So it's trading in one direction. That's rule number one. Rule number two is we get a giant candle, giant candle, giant being the critical word here, closes beyond the zone. Now, now what I mean by beyond the zone well, it just means that if it's a support level, it breaks support and closes below support. And if it's resistance, it breaks above resistance and closes above resistance. So when I say beyond the zone, it just means that it went beyond it. So here we have the zone. And, and he, this is something that I want to be really, really clear on, guys. The way that you know that this is a valid, and this candle, by the way, this is actually called the cliff candle. So the cliff candle is a giant candle, and we can, we'll just put that in there. Cliff candle closes beyond the zone, okay? So see how the market closed here? It closed there. It closed, I'm looking for the lowest close here, here, and it closed there. Okay, so it closed there at 72.47, it closed there at 72.29, it closed there at 72.50, and it closed there at 72.29. This close, all of a sudden, is at 72.05. So it's much lower than the lowest close we've seen around this zone. I think 29 was the lowest one, right? 72.29 and 72.29. So these two closes are equally as low, but this one is much lower at 05. So 29, 29, 05. Why is that important? Because it means that it's a valid cliff candle. It's closed clearly beyond the zone. Does that make sense? I just want to make sure that everyone... If, if if it doesn't make sense, raise your hand now if you if you're trying to if you if, if you're trying to wrap your head around that because it's a really important concept. 
And this is where most most traders, when they when they're testing these the the setup, they 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 miss on one or two. These are the two rules that are most likely violated. It's not trending, which <laughs> again, do as I say, not as I do. But I want to use this as an example just because it's such a great looking. Uh, the candles are so perfect, but it's it's got to be trending in one direction, and you're still trading in that same direction when you trade Acapulco. And then you need a cliff that clearly, obviously, and deliberately has breached that zone. Does that make sense? Everyone cool with that? I'm just going to take a sip of my vitamin uh, water here stuff while I wait for your comments to come through because I know there's a little bit of a delay, okay? Cool. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Let's roll. So the next, um, it's always funny when you do webinars because you don't know. Um, it's kind of like doing a monologue, you know, but without an audience. You never really know um, how things are going. Just want to make sure everything's cool. All right. So um, the next candle is critical now. So we've got trending one direction. It's been going down. Again, I would say it's consolidated too long here. This isn't ideal. So we kind of violated rule one. But rule two is the cliff closes beyond the zone. It clearly does that here. You really want, ideally, you want to see the cliff be a giant candle. Really, ideally, the cliff equals a huge candle. So the biggest candle we've seen in X number of candles. Okay? That's ideal. That's ideal. Now, um, the next candle is called the diver. Okay, so you know in Acapulco, Mexico, where they have these giant cliffs and the divers jump off these massive cliffs and kind of swan dive into the water? Well, the cliff is massive and the diver is really tiny. That's exactly what we got going on here and this is the exact effect we're looking for. So once you break through that, that zone and close beyond that zone, then you get this little diver where the market kind of comes back and is, is, it tries to, to wick into that support and resistance zone. That's the diver's job. So the diver attempts to touch the, zo the um, zone. The diver is small, small candle. So if there's any, ever any doubt, I'm going to get rid of the beer belly stuff because we already covered that. It's kind of messing up my game here. Okay, cool. So the diver is a small candle and it, um, it, you know, it, basically it, uh, it retouches the zone. That's, that's, that's the diver's job. The diver's job is just to come back, touch the zone and say, yep, sorry, I can't, I can't get through that anymore. That's it. We really have truly broken through. And the reason why this is so critical is sometimes you'll notice I think the most recent one was on the Singapore dollar. No, it wasn't. I think it was on the Swissy. Yes, it was. Okay, so I did this video earlier today for the people in the private forum, and we were talking about divergence. Well, sometimes what you'll see is the market will kind of, it'll get down to a level here. See, we had resistance there, resistance, support here. Um, resistance. See how the market broke through this level here, okay? And it closed down here and then it rocketed back right back up. These are what we call blow off tops or blow off bottoms. Here's another one down here actually. See how the market I can guarantee you that that's a zone. Yeah, see there it is right there. There it, came, it cropped up right there. But see how the market fell below that zone and then it rocketed back up immediately? That's why we wait the extra diver candle to make sure that it's not doing some sort of blow off top or blow off bottom, right? Does that make sense? So if you get a blow off top or a blow off bottom, then you're gonna see a pattern like this or like this emerge. And if you get an Acapulco, you're gonna see something completely different. Uh, with the Acapulco, 
you're going to see where the diver candle is um, small and the cliff candle is huge and the diver candle doesn't jump back up on the other side of the zone. That's critical. Usually when you get a blow off top, you have the opposite pattern. So you might go below the break below the zone with a little tiny candle and then the next candle is this massive huge one that pops back up in, uh, you know beyond the the zone and gets back up there kind of like what we saw there on the singapore dollar i'll show you it again just to so you can be really clear on this oh not the singapore dollar sorry it was the swissy wasn't it yeah sorry it was the swissy so again usually when you have a blow off uh blow off bottom the little candle is the one that closed below the zone and then, the, and then it quickly gets back up there. Now we also happen to have a divergence here, which is not really that critical, but I was, I was talking about that um, earlier today in the video. But the, the important thing here to note for you guys, sorry, not the Singapore dollar. I keep going back to the Singapore dollar. We'll talk about the Singapore dollar at the end of this session. But right now, it's important to note that the, the, cliff, the, um, di the cliff candle clearly breaches the zone and the diver retouches it. And then what I do, is I put my order below the lowest low. For a sell, sell Acapulco, a bearish Acapulco, if the diver candle is lower, the order goes a few pips below that. If the cliff candle is lower, it goes a few pips below that. So the low on this in this case is at 71.97. So I'd go in around 71.92. So five pips lower. Okay. Sell stop or buy stop. Um, so I'll just put the bearish rules here. The bullish rules are obviously the opposite. Sell stop below lowest candle. There's only two candles in the Acapulco formation. So if it's lower than the Acapulco uh, uh, cliff, if the cliff is lower, then the order goes below that. If the diver is lower, then the order goes below that. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. The only thing that matters is that your your diver candle does not snap back up and close up above the zone. If that happens, it's a no trade. Okay. Now, ideally, I would wait two candles for it to go. So if it doesn't go lower on the first candle, which it usually does, then I would wait for the next one. And in this case, you can see we broke lower in the first candle there. Oh, and the stop loss. Let's talk about stop loss. A couple of interesting things here, guys. The, um, the stop loss, you have a couple of options here. The... Um, the real aggressive trader can put the stop loss above the high of the diver or above the zone, whichever is higher. So in other words, if the diver candle doesn't quite get to the zone, then the stop would be above the zone. If the diver candle stabs above the zone and comes back down and closes below it, um, then you would put it above the high of the diver. Either way, it's the highest high you have. Now in that case, you're gonna have a really high, uh, tight stop in this case, it'd be about 40 pips or so. Uh, but if you have it above the um, the cliff candle, it's about 90 pips. So you can have a 90 pip stop or a 40 pip stop. <laughs> I know it's a big deal. It's a big difference, isn't it? Um, the only thing is sometimes you'll break lower and it'll come back up and retouch it again and it might stab even higher and stop you out. So putting your stop here is risky. You're going to lower your win rate, blah, 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 but you will make more money on your winners. So... It's better reward to risk ratio. All right, so now every yeah, I did. Yeah, you got that stop loss. So there's there's basically two options. One is above the zone or the diver, and the other is above the cliff. So stop goes. I'll put it in here. Rule number six. Stop is above diver or support and resistance zone, whichever is higher. Or here, here's option one, so stop one above the diver or the support and resistance zone. That's stop one. Stop two, here, trending in one direction. Cliff candle is beyond the zone. Cliff is a huge candle. Diver is a small candle. Sell stop is below the lowest candle. And stop one 
which is option one, is above the diver or the zone. Again, whichever one is higher in the case of a bearish Acapulco. And then stop two is above the cliff. Okay. Is that cool? Y'all y'all cool with that? Hey, great to see you, Kareem. Hi, good to see you after a long time. Thanks, Kareem. Kareem says, hey, good to see you after a long time. Thank you so much, Walter, for providing quality of education. I'm glad, I'm glad you think that it's quality education. I'm glad that you get something out of it. I try my hardest to make it as uh, clear and concise and rule-based as possible, <laughs> you know, for a discretionary trader. So everyone's clear. It's trending in one direction. Of course, we did not have that in this case. Um, that's probably the only thing that I would say we don't have on this list. The cliff closes well lower than all of these other recent closes. So it clearly breaches that zone. Um, it's a massive candle. It's the biggest candle we've seen probably since maybe this candle or even further back. Maybe, maybe this candle here, actually probably since this candle. So that's a long, 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 long time. The diver is a very small candle. It should not be as big as the cliff. If it is, then you're probably talking about a blow off top or a blow off bottom. That's a huge red, red flag, right? And we talked about blow off tops and blow off bottoms. I showed you those on the Swissy daily chart. Uh, and then the sell stop goes below the lowest thing, whether it's the, the cliff or the diver. And the stop loss can go above the zone or above the diver for a really, really tight stop if you want high reward to risk. But if you don't want... If you, you know, you're going to get stopped out quite a bit because it will oftentimes break lower and then come back up and tag it again and then finally move away. Sometimes that happens and it's a crapshoot whether or not you're going to survive that. So, so in this case, you can see it did go lower. Now, what about targets? I like support and resistance. Okay. Support and resistance makes a whole lot of sense to me. So for me, I would be looking for something like this spot right here. And that, that makes sense as a target. Also, this one down here makes sense as a target. Those are the spots that I would look for. And you can see it would have hit, let me see here, would have hit target one. But again, that's probably, if you have a 90 pip stop, having your target only uh, 30 pips away, that's not going to work. So you're going to have to go for this further target down here. And that is in fact hit right there. If it's not hit on this candle, it's definitely hit on this candle. And so for that one, you're looking at about 80 pips. So the stop, it's about one to one, probably a little bit less. Yeah, because the stop on this is gonna be about 85 pips, 86 pips. Whereas the target down here is about 80. And it looks like it would have even gone further. I don't know where the next zone would have been here. Uh, well, there's one right here. There's one right here. So we got, we've got touch, touch, touch. Yeah, okay, so everyone clear on that? So there's another one that, that was hit as well. So the first one's only about 35 pips or so, 30, 35 pips. So it's only, it's not, it's only gonna make sense if your stop's up here and you're risking 35 pips, even then it's only about, it's not even one to one. Then the target here, and then the target here, the target there, you're talking about 134 pips for this target down there, okay? And that's actually as far as it went, and then it came back up. Now let's see if we can find a bullish one. Here's a bullish one right here. The market's been going up, pull back, up, pull back, broke through with a massive bullish candle, came back down with your little diver, right? toward the zone here, right? Breaks higher on the next candle, goes all the way to the next zone up there. And then the next zone would have been around there. So if you had your stop down here, you're looking at about 30 pips of, of uh, risk for about 30 pips of reward. And then the second target was about 70 or 60 or 70. So. Yeah, so that one's about 70 pips away or 65 pips away, whereas the target on this, that one's about 60, 60, 65 pips of risk. 
and you're looking at about the same 65 pips reward to that target. There would have been a further target up here that would not have been hit um, around 73. So, But that's a bullish example. Again, just to be clear here, the cliff is the big bullish candle here. The diver is a little tiny one here. I'm not sure which one's higher. I think the diver is at 71.88 and the cliff has a high of 71. Yeah, they're both equal. So you put a few pips above that. There's target one, there's target two, and then target three up there. Cool. You know, and I know some people would probably put another target here, right? I mean, that, that that's fine. If you want to put a target there, that's cool too, but I don't think that would have been, no, that wasn't hit. So everyone uh, cool with that? Does that make sense? I don't want to um, blow through that. So couple of, couple of, um, couple of important things to keep in mind with the Acapulco. If it isn't a big bullish candle, there's no guarantee that the trend is still going. If it isn't, doesn't clearly close above, um, you know, where the market has, um, closed around the zone before, then, you know, it's not, it's, it's not a clear break. So this one's tricky because it only just started this up move. So you don't really have any, um, any reversals here. Uh, the closest thing would, you would have would be here and there. And there was a little bit of a blow off top here. Again, this is why we use the Acapulco rules because if we were looking for an Acapulco at this stage right here after this big bullish candle happened, what would be wrong with this? Well, one, the market's been going down and we're looking to buy. So that's a reversal Acapulco. That's not really part of the game, is it? We wanna go with the trend. So that's the number one problem with this. And the second thing is, this diver candle is way too big. It, it in fact, it even goes lower. It's a, got a wider range than the, than the cliff candle. And so that right away, that's a red flag. And you can see we ended up with a blow off top here. So that's why we have the rules the way they are for the Acapulco. Um, it really should be, the diver really should be much, much smaller than the cliff. And this is the kind of, like, this kind of move here where it's going down, down, down. That's where the ones where I like to see it. Uh, um, you know, that's where I like to get in on Acapulco on those sorts of setups. Let's see if we can find any on the, um, on the Aussie, because I know the Aussie is kind of bearish. So, okay, let's talk about this. I want to talk about some mistakes people make. Whoopsie. Look, this right here um, is not an Acapulco to me. It closes on the zone, and then you got this little diver here. So let's talk. Let's count all the mistakes here. First of all, what's the lowest close? The low this close is higher, so this close is lower, and the close is at seventy six oh five. What's the close here? Seventy six oh two. So it's three pips lower, and it's not beyond the zone where I have it drawn here, right? Now here's your okay. So but let's say we 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 didn't see that or we messed up or whatever, but we still wanted to take the trade. So here's my little diver and my diver um, comes back and touches the zone, but my cliff didn't even go below it. There's a total, there's this lot of problems with this, right? Uh, and then the, another thing is the next two candles didn't trade lower than the diver. So I never would have been triggered anyway, because this candle didn't trade lower than the diver low and this candle didn't trade lower than the diver low. So there's all kinds of, um, rule violations here and why this would not be an Acapulco. It, it clearly didn't close low enough and, uh, you know, it just needed a lower close and uh, it needed to trigger over the next two candles and it, it never did that. Okay, so is that, is that, does that, is that making sense, people? Here's another one. Let's talk about this one right here. So I could see where some people say, well, the market's been going up. It gives us massive bullish close and then you get a little uh you get a little uh a little diver it comes back and touches the zone that's great right yeah that's excellent okay so what do we do well we go ahead and we put our order above the high here what happens nothing it closes down below the zone on the very next candle and right away that's that's that is a red alert that is trade not gonna happen right I, don't, I wouldn't even leave my order in for another candle. Uh, it doesn't break high enough anyway with the, with the wick here, but 
As soon as it breaks below and closes below that zone, we know that the breakout is now false. It's not happening. It's not convinced that it wants to stay up there, so it's trade over. Okay? Is that clear? You guys cool with that? Make sense? So again, the big mistakes to look out for are, uh, let's get back here. Whoa. Where's my, where's my, uh, oh, this is the Aussie. <laughs> I'm looking for my rules. It's because they're on the Kiwi. Of course. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's go back to the rules here. The big mistakes are not going with the trend and not getting a really clear close beyond the zone. What happened to all my rules? Oh, there they are. Okay. All right, there they are. The biggest mistakes, the biggest trend, uh, the biggest rule violations are this one, number one, and number two. If you can nail those two down and just follow the rest of the rules, you're pretty cool. Now, there is another advanced entry that we can talk about if you want. Yeah, look, the, the question is, can we use Acapulco on one-hour charts? Sure, of course you can, but the thing we not need to be aware of is you got to test this stuff, right? I never take, like, my, I have a lot of little mini accounts because what I like to do is Forex tester, demo account, and then a mini account. And I want to triple my account along the way with each, each of those stages. If I can't do that, then I know that I don't want to trade that system. So I, I, this is not the kind of thing I don't recommend anybody. I don't think it makes sense for anyone to just jump into this stuff without testing it. But the way that I would do it, again, is I'd be looking for a nice, let's go to the euro. Go to the euro, find a nice one-hour trend, and then once you get a one-hour trend, wait for the big candle and then the um, the diver. Let's see, uh, that's almost one here, but it's not really ideal because this candle's too small. It's been going up, it went up, consolidate, up, consolidate, up, and then it gave us that little diver looking thing. So this is pretty good. The issue I would have with this one is that the, the cliff candle isn't really big enough. It should have been like, I would have been more comfortable with this if this was a more bullish candle. Uh, and it didn't trigger on the first two candles anyway. It didn't trade higher than the the uh, diver anyway, so it, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have been a trade for me. Okay, now we're going down, down. Ah, okay. Here's another one. It's a, it's a really close one here. Look, here's your cliff. Here's your diver. But my diver is closed back up above the zone, hasn't it? So I have to let this one go. I can't take it. And it looks like it wouldn't have traded lower than the diver over the next two candles anyway. So it's a no go. It's a no trade. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. No probs. No probs. Here again, now we're in a downtrend. So we, we would be waiting for some candles to uh, trade below the zones. Big, huge candles is what we want. I think we can see we're kind of stuck in a little bit of a, a little bit of a, um, trend line here sort of move so all right do you guys have any live charts you want to have a look at i can tell you what i'm looking at and and you go ahead and put your questions through so i like this big box here on the yen i like how it's broken out of the box it came back up to touch it and it's fallen away i think that it makes sense to sell if it can get below the low here so it's about 44 pips lower than where it is right now i'm not convinced that that's going to happen but that could be a nice sell on that one. Singapore dollar has been following this pattern where it kind of goes down, consolidates, down, consolidate, down, consolidate. So it could break this trend line. This is almost like, this trend is almost like too sloppy for me. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I was looking at this earlier, but I really like it when the, the trending candles are so big and the consolidation candles are really tiny. I almost think this is just too choppy, really. I, I like really nice, smooth trends. 
We talked about the Swissy. It's got divergence on the indicators, which is not really that critical. But what is interesting to me about the Swissy is that it's broken through this really strong zone. And if it were to come back down here and bounce off this zone and close with a really strong bullish candle, boy, that would be nice. I would love for this to swing back down here and bounce and go boing and print a big white candle on my chart here. You know, maybe it comes down to 99, it goes as low as 99.09 and then closes up here at 99.50. I would say yes. And I would look to get in on a breach of that high. And then finally, the New Zealand CAD. Um, I talked about this earlier today. Uh, during When I did my video earlier today, what this looked like was this. I'll show you. It had a kangaroo tail and it had a bearish candle. And I said, this is a trap. People are looking to sell this and it's a definite trap. I think it's going to come right back up here. And it has, in fact. Um, but the reason why I said that was because the daily chart shows what? The daily chart chart shows a bullish belt and that this retrace move is just that, just a retrace move. And I, I would, I, I would uh, suggest that because the last time the market came down here, it found some support in this area. I would say that the same thing is happening right here. It's finding support in this area. And I would be pretty convinced that it's going to go long, you know, that you can go long that it's going to go higher. But it would have to breach the high here at 93, 96. I have to get to 9402 or something like that. Um, I don't use t lower time frames. But the only time frame I use, the only one I use on lower time frames is the home run trade on the one hour. So I don't really trade a four hour. Or sorry, or one hour um, Acapulco's. I trade daily, weekly, four hour ones. You could trade the eight hour, the 12 hour, the six hour, whatever. But, you know, I am not a big fan of one hour chart trades, except when I'm trying to lock in a really tight stop loss in a strong trend, which is what my home run system does. So outside of that, I don't, uh, I don't like to do that. Um. The Aussie Kiwi is another one. We were looking at this last Friday, and I said it's probably going to hit the edge of this channel and fall. So far, it's doing that. It may get down back down to the to this area and find support, though, and then bounce and go back up. So that's another interesting chart, that one. Any other questions, guys? Any other charts that you want to have a look at? I think the pound is an absolute mess, and I don't like it at all. I wouldn't I wouldn't trade that one. I wouldn't trade that one if someone paid me, man. <laughs> Here is the um gold chart on the four hour chart. And kind of like what we were talking about before on the yen da daily chart. Um the yen daily chart had a breakout, it broke lower, it came back up and touched the box and pushed away off of that. That's kind of the same thing here. It could, like with this four-hour gold chart, it could break higher, trade higher up here for a while, then come back down and do a bullish bounce. I don't know that it's going to break out and do that, but um, please use Twitter regularly. Yeah, I tweet out all, every time I do a video update, I tweet it out. So I tweet out like, 12 times a week. So, yeah. So, yeah, breaks, breaks higher, comes back down and bounces. That would be another potential trade. Any other ones that you guys want to see? You got some wicked whipsaws on the indies, bro. On the indicator, bro. Wicked whipsaws, bro. Whoa. This is getting to be really interesting. And tell you what, if the pound yen can break this, this level here, have a look. It's probably in a free fall down to 130. That would be something to watch. Yeah. 
tell you what, this pound yen, if it can break below here, it is going to be something to uh, behold. I'm definitely keeping my eye on that. Another interesting one would be if the pound Aussie were to get up here to 165.70. That could be a bearish trade, perhaps, if we get a bearish signal there. So that's another one. That's that's the four-hour pound Aussie. My charts are 5 p.m. New York close. I don't use midnight GMT close. I use the other, the other chart. Aussie. I think we already saw the Aussie. This is just some sort of wild Aussie chart. Pound Swiss. Um, I think we drew this uh, before, this trend line at the beginning of the, this webinar. So see how it's um, touched this trend line a few times? What happens if it breaks the trend line? Well, I'll show you what I would do. If it were to break that trend line, I think it would make, potentially, make a lot of sense It were to break that trend line. Oopsie. Um, I think <laughs> that's not going to work, is it? Let's get rid of that one then. Let me see if we can get this one. So this would be the target. So if it now, I I know it hasn't done it yet, but let's just say that it does. Okay. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, that we see the market trade above this trend line, breaks above, and breaks above this horizontal level and closes above it. I might take a trade all the way up to here. So I'd be 200, 200 pips, and I might have like an 80 pip stop, and I might, might make like a 200, 210, you know, something like a three to one or two and a half to one trade on that one. And that would be what we call a reverse drop pay, pair. Well, which exotic pairs would you like to see? How much How much do you want to pay in uh, spread? <laughs> in other words, how much would you like to pay in your spread? Okay, we're gonna, we'll pull an exotic out of thin air. How about the Yuan? Yuan's really fun to trade. It's uh, pretty good at tra trending, actually. So... Uh, it's a mess on the daily. It's a mess on the four hour and the weekly is messy too. So this is what's happening on the yuan is it's tightening up. This is USD yuan. And this is like, uh, usually it's a trend continuation pattern. What it breaks out to the upside because it's been going up, which means yuan's weakening, right? So there's an exotic pair for you. Any other ones? Last question, guys, and then we'll we'll um, we'll shut it down. Last question. Here's another exotic pair: the Mexican peso. Ole! Let's see this sucker. Template: red and white. It's uh, a bit crazy daily hey this would be another one for a reverse drop trade okay so the market's been kind of following this trend line right so if we're to break above this trend line i would go to a higher time frame which unfortunately i don't have look at that monthly kangaroo tail that's awesome look at that monthly kangaroo tail how did i miss that that is awesome. I, what I would do with this one, actually, because we don't have a trend line, I would probably just go for something like this. I would put a horizontal level here, and I would target 2121, you know? That's what I would do. If, if it were to break above this trend line and bounce off of it or bounce off one of the horizontal levels of support and resistance, I think that would be an awesome trade on the Mexican peso. That That, that looks like something... That would be really fun. Let, let's keep an eye on that one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. That goes right on the uh, watch list, actually. So we're gonna keep an eye on the Mexican peso. All right, guys. I really appreciate your time. I hope that you have a wonderful week. Um, have a 
I don't trade the Asian session. I trade the, I look at the Asian session to set up my trades for, for London and New York. Most of my trades will trigger during London or New York. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks so much for spending time here. I will see you at the next Naked Trading webinar. I wish you happy trading, and we will see you there. Take care, okay? Take care, guys. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye.